relations. Uh, you see, you can have a uh, linear relationship between uh, your drain to source current ID and your voltage VDS, okay? And how you can obtain this is, uh, I mean, you, you can apply a Kirchhoff voltage law across the output loop over here. And uh, you can see this, uh, you can write this as VDD minus uh, IDRD is your VDS, okay? So VDD minus IDRD is your VDS. So this is indeed a linear relationship between uh, VDS and the drain source current. So all the quantities involved in this relationship are DC quantities, okay? So the uh, well, advantage of this uh, uh, this line in the IV characteristics, so in IV characteristics, okay, which you have uh, if, uh, on, on the vertical axis, you consider the drain current like this. So you have a, okay, you have a drain current. Then on the x-axis, you have VDS, drain to source voltage. And uh, if uh, your gate voltage is sufficient, or, and if it is greater than threshold, you have a minimum uh, ID current for the given VGS, okay? For a given VGS, let's say you have this drain to source. Uh, you have you have a you have a you have a, uh, a significant current, okay? It's non-zero. It's above the uh, threshold. VGS is above the threshold, okay? So this VGS is above VDN, okay? And uh, you can see that in this uh, figure, we are considering uh, an NMOS device. This is an NMOS device given the direction of the current. And since, or uh, you can also see that the drain is is, is is at a higher potential. The VDD, the drain over here, is at a higher potential with regards to the source, okay? So this is your gate, drain, and, and uh, this is your gate, drain, and source. So the, the direction of the current is is, uh, is out of the source, right? So this is an, this is an NMOS device, and this uh, configuration is, is common source, CS. Why? Because the source, the source over here is common to both the uh, both the input and the output. Okay, but the, this is the input and this is the output. So all, you might be taking the output from the source from the drain over here. So the so the source is common. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, well, if you if you're going to increase your VGS, the physical um, interpretation of uh, increasing the ID is that you are increasing the space charge density, and uh, you keep on increasing VGS, uh, the inversion layer increases, so ID increases. Okay, this in this way, in this direction, VGS is increasing, so ID is increasing over here as well. Now uh, the DC load line over here, you see, um, if um, if ID is zero, okay, in this relationship, if ID is zero then that means VDS is VDD, okay? So there's a, there's a point VDD. And then there comes a point uh, such that uh, VDS is zero, okay? So for VDS is equal to zero, uh, this is equal to VDD over RD. So uh, when ID becomes equal to VDD by RD, well, you have another point, and you all, all you need to draw a line is two points, okay? So you connect those two points. So this is, this is my DC load line, okay? And then for a given VGS, let's say this VGS is my, uh, is where the transistor is by. Let's call this VGS Q, okay? Then your Q point is defined as the intersection between the DC load line and your IV vector. So this point is your Q point, okay? And you call this as I D Q, and uh, then you have this another parameter associated with this point that is your V D S Q. So that's the point where the transistor is biased, and it's very uh, easy to see where the transistor is biased and which region is biased. You can see that this point is, is in sat region, so this is a saturation region, okay. And uh, well, for saturation. The transistor has to be on, so VGS, a minimum VGS greater than threshold was there, already there. So either it is in SAT or non-SAT, but it gives a very easy visualization. So the load line is helpful in visualizing the region in which the MOSFET is biased. Okay, so that's important. Um, the other thing is, well, you have to see that if this VDS uh, Q, if this VDS Q is indeed greater than your VDS SAT for the given VGS, okay? So VDSQ is should be greater than VDS SAT, which is which is what? Which is the overdrive voltage. Okay. And if you recall for NMOS uh, device, VDS SAT is given by VGS is equal to VGS 
over here this is VDSQ so I'll write this as VDSQ this is VDSQ minus VDN okay so if your VDSQ is greater than uh, this quantity VDSQ minus VDN so you are above VDS sat okay which which will be somewhere over here this defines a transition point of non sat and sat regions okay so if you draw a curve like this you draw a curve like this it goes, goes like this okay so uh, well this curve is also growing with respect to VDS so I mean just VDS sat is, is growing with respect to VDSQ um, because your invariant layer and your channel dimensions are changing with respect to VGS. So, um, anyways, but if your VDS over here is greater than VDS sat for the given VGS, well, it is biased in saturation region. Okay, and you can use uh, the uh, current to voltage relationship for the sat region to uh, to do the analysis for the MOSFET. I mean, to uh, to, uh, to to find the current and associated voltages and for the design, etc. Okay. So, uh, okay, if VDS is greater than VDS sat, this is sat. If not, then, then you are in the non sat region. Okay, so this is a non sat region. Non sat region. All right. So we have three regions non sat, sat, and then there is a cutoff in which the VGS is less than uh, VDN, and you don't have any significant current, maybe some small leakage current. It's not very significant. So the transistor is off when ID is zero, and this X is this, this X is this represents id equal to zero so that's a cut off region okay so uh, you see the, if you consider this common source circuit in, which is shown in the figure below and writing a kirchhoff's uh, voltage equation around the drain source loop this results in the following equation and this is a lean, linear relationship of uh, vds and id okay uh, well this is vds minus id id and that gives you uh, vdd okay so you can write this as such so this load line equation shows the linear relationship between the drain current and the drain to source voltage right so that that's the um, idea behind the load line so on the on the uh, so this, this this happens to be a load line so on the uh, iv characteristics of uh, of mosfet transistor characteristics iv characteristics wherever this load line intersects your iv curves so these are iv curves for the given vgs okay so we have for example over three three, three curves for the given three vgs so uh, wherever this load line intersects that's your uh, that's your Q point, okay? That's your Q point. So for for, for if we consider this VGSQ for uh, this gate source voltage, and for then for this gate source voltage, well, you don't consider those the these these curves, okay? You don't consider these curves. This is your curve, okay? For VGS for a given VGS, there is certain IV relationship. For certain IV curve, there is a particular IV curve. Consider that, and then wherever this load line intersects, that's your operating point of the transistor, okay? We call this as a Q point. All right, so, uh, well, the same thing goes over here. You see for the given VGSQ, now if you recall this way, we consider the VGSQ of two volts for, um, there was an example 3.3, uh, if you recall, so if you want to go back, um, we, we talked about this in previous uh, lectures. Now in example 3.3, you remember VGS was two volts, okay? So we are going to select the curve for two volts, and then we see that where this uh, is going to intersect, uh, where the line is going to intersect for the given curve, I mean, for a certain VGS, which is equal to 2 volts. Uh, your load line, you draw the load line, okay, which is situated by the linear relationship. So this, this is going to be a Q point, okay. This is your Q point. And how you uh, draw the load line? Well, all you need to know is the point where ID is 0 and another point. So all you need is two points. This is ID equal to 0, and over here, your VDS is equal to 0, okay. So two points only are required draw the DC load line and this gives you a very easy visual visualization where the transistor is biased and where the transistor is operating sat non sat or cut off all right so oh anyways this example is what we've discussed previously and over here we use the transistor with the conduction parameter of 0.1 okay so these are the biasings uh, supply VDD was 5 volts all right this current is 0.1 milliamps and the transistor was indeed biased in the, uh, the saturation region so if you recall in the previous uh, lecture uh, VDS uh, was found out to be three volts for the given ID, which is much greater, which is which is greater than VDS sat basically because that's one volt. So you are you are you are you you are in the sat region. Okay, the transistor is in the sat region. Okay, now uh, let's um, well, let, 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 let's uh, take this example further a little bit further. So for the given VDS two volts, uh, you draw the line. 
Okay, so this figure is showing you the transistor characteristics. It, it, not only the, it's not only the load line which you are looking at. This is your load line, pink one. This is your load line. Uh, you have uh, a few more features that you can observe. So the other is, you have a curve, a VDS SAT curve, and this is shown by this uh, dotted line over here. Okay, so we are talking about this curve, this curve. Um, and uh, you see this curve is, is increasing with respect to VDS. VDN is, uh, is a constant, okay, that's a constant and that's a function of the uh, uh, MOSFET construction uh, associated with the MOSFET construction. So as you increase VGS, uh, what happens is that your Q point might <coughs> shift, okay, so as you are going and increasing VGS, I mean the next curve would be like this, the next curve would be like this. So the next curve over it would be like this. So as you are increasing VGS, you can see that your uh, Q point over here, it might shift somewhere over here above on above on the uh, on the on the on the uh, on the load line on the load line, and from SAT region you might shift your op transistor operation to non-SAT region. Okay. So for the given VGS, as you increase VGS, for any particular VGS, you have a certain VDS SAT, okay? And as you increase VGS, VDS SAT also increases. So there is a curve that defines this relationship for a constant VDN. So uh, so you might, uh, from one, uh, if for, for one VGS, if you are in SAT region, if you go on increasing VGS in this direction, uh, you might, uh, um, uh, shift your operation of the transistor from SAT to non-SAT region, okay? So that's one thing, that's another thing to to, uh, to think about in looking at this curve. So this is your VDS SAT curve in the broken line. Then you have the load line, okay? Uh, load line is defined, uh, uh, is primarily defined in terms of what is your VDD, if that is fixed, in that example, 3.3, we have this uh, five volts, okay? RD is fixed, okay? So uh, these two points are fixed on the line, okay? So you can you can just rearrange the this whole equation. Rd is 20 kilo ohms, and uh, your VDD was 5 volts, and you you find Rd in milliamps. Okay, so that's that's the gradient of the line minus 1 over 20. So you see a negative gradient of the line. 5 over 20 is where it intercepts. Then VDS is zero. You see when VDS is zero, you have 0.25 milliamps. So that that's your line. That's a straight line. So uh, you see the two ends of the um, load line are de completely determined okay, in usual manner. If ID is zero, if ID is zero, which is the case over here, you see the ID is zero over here. When ID is zero, when, when you have this point equal to VDD, so when VDS becomes equal to VDD, that's where it intersects with the uh, x-axis or the bottom axis. So uh, you see if ID is zero over here, if I make this zero, your VDS is simply equal to uh, VDD. And um, in that case, you have one point. The other point can be found by, uh, if you set this equal to zero, and for that, uh, you have this point, okay. You have this point. So, uh, you, uh, for the given uh, transistor biasing resistance, so it's given a drain resistance and given a supply voltage, you have a certain DC load line. Then uh, your uh, Q point will be defined not only by the load line, but what is your, the, the other question will be, what, what is your VGS Q? Because for, for a certain VGS Q, there will be a certain IV curve that you, you will be following, okay? So uh, if you're going increasing VGS, you might shift your equation to saturation non-sat as I talked earlier. So uh, you need VGS Q as well, okay? To determine uh, the exact operating point of the transistor. So uh, over here you determine the two points, and then the Q point of the transistor is given by the DC drain current and the drain to voltage source, drain drain to source uh, voltage, and it's always on the load line as shown in the figure. So the operating point will always be on the load line, load line and the IV curve, okay, for the given VGS. So uh, this curve gives you the transistor characteristics, it gives you the VDS SAT curve, it gives you the load line, and then the intersection of the uh, IV characters in the load line gives you the Q point for the NMOS uh, common source uh, NMOS circuit, okay, which we have seen before. This is your NMOS common source circuit, NMOS, uh, NMOS common source circuit. All right. Uh, so now if the gate to source voltage, okay, if VGS, what it says is VGS is less than VTN, you, see, you understand that 
and there is no transistor current okay this implies what does this implies is that the drain current is zero because uh, the drain and source terminal are separated by a p type region and uh, you don't have any drain current so id is zero so that means the transistor is in cutoff region the transistor is off simply off so you simply off you need you need to turn on the transistor first okay so the transistor is, is in cutoff as the gate to source uh, voltage becomes greater than vtn the transistor turns on and uh, and is biased the saturation region okay so as you keep on increasing vgs okay now at point comes as you keep on you need vgs to establish a channel okay so when vgs is greater than vtn so when vgs is greater than your vtn this is greater than vtn then there is a there is a non-zero current ID. Okay, there's non-zero current that flows. The transistor turns on. So you need you need VDN, you need VGS to establish the channel. So that's enhancement type of uh, uh, MOSFET. Okay. So as we just increase, the Q point moves up on the load line. So as we have seen before, uh, as VGS increases, your VDS sat uh, also increases. So your Q point shifts upward. It shifts upward towards the transition point. Uh, because as the curves are uh, as, as as more current as the transistor drain to source as drain is drawing more current from the source uh, you see you're shifting your q point towards the transition point and uh, if that occurs you change the mode of operation from sat to non sat so the transition point is the boundary between sat and non sat regions and it's defined as a point where vds is vds sat so as VGS increases above the transition point value, the transistor becomes biased in the non-sat region. Okay. So uh, this example shows this. Uh, uh, the analysis of this example shows what happens. So uh, what it says is determine the transition point parameters for uh, uh, for the for the given common source circuit. It's again an NMOS common source. So consider the circuit shown in the figure below. It's already what we have discussed before in example 3.3 as well. And so you take the same transistor with VTN equal to 1 volts and uh, Kn as 0.1 milli as per volt square. Now at the transition point, VDS set is given a VDS minus VTN. Uh, VDS set or VDS is also given by, if you apply the KVL at the output of the loop, that's VDD minus RD, okay, VDD minus IDR. So the drain current is still uh, the same, this, this, this drain current and the relationship of that with the VGS is defined for the saturation region. Okay, this quadratic relationship is for the saturation region. So you combine the two two, two equations, put uh, you substitute for ID over here, and re re rearrange the equation. You have something like this. So VDD minus this is your ID. Okay, this is your ID RD. This is ID RD. Then uh, what you have over here is a quadratic. In what? In VGS minus VTN. You see, if you rearrange your equation over here. Then this becomes Kn Rd VGS minus Vtn. So you have the quadratic VGS minus Vtn. And then you substitute for Kn and uh, Rd. So solve this for VGS minus Vtn. So you find out that uh, uh, VGS minus Vtn comes out to be equal to 1.35 volts. And that VGS minus Vtn over here, uh, that uh, VGS minus Vtn, uh, okay. So that VGS minus Vtn over here is also your VDS is also the VDS, okay? So VDS is 1.35 volts. Therefore, uh, for VDN equal to one volts, one volts, uh, you have VGS as 2.35 volts, and you can find the uh, current ID from VGS and VDN. This is 1.35 volts multiplied by K, and it's 0.1. So you have ID as uh, 0.182 uh, milliamps, all right? Now, uh, so uh, or, or in, in, in this circuit, you see, for the given uh, biasing transistors, you have uh, um, VG as five volts, okay. And if you determine VGS, this comes. This this was two volts previously. And uh, now for VGS, as long as it is less than 2.35 volts, the transistor is biased in the SAT region, okay. But for VGS greater than uh, 2.35 volts. The transistor is biased in the non sat region. Okay, so what does this mean? So this means that um, VGS, when VGS less than uh, 2.35 volts, 
as, as you as as you for example in, or, or in, in this situation uh, id was uh, 0.1 milliamps okay and uh, vdd is 5 volts so 5 minus id rd 5 minus 0 0.1 into 20 is 3 volts okay so uh, so this uh, uh, for this for this the vgs is 2 volts so this is this is still saturation region okay so 2 volts is less than uh, 2 volts is less than 2.35 the transistor is still bias in saturation region but if you uh, increase vgs beyond 2.35 then you have to uh, shift your transistor q point up on the up up on the load line okay and you you make it go in the non sat region okay so the transistor is biased in the non sat region when uh, you uh, you increase your vgs beyond 2.35 volts so for example in this uh, example your VGS is 2 and we are still using this uh, IV characteristic for saturation region. So uh, increasing VGS beyond 2.35 makes you shift the Q point upward on the load line and you bias the transistor in the non sat region. Now, a few comments about analyzing the DC response of the MOSFET is that the circuit requires the knowledge of biasing condition, saturation, non sat region. Now, in some cases, the uh, bias condition may not be obvious, which means that we have to guess the bias condition. Then analyze the circuit to determine if we have the solution consistent with our initial. So the initial guess will be once the transistor is on, so you have initial. The first thing is you see if VGS is greater than VDN. Now, if that is the case, if that is the case over here, you see over here, then you have a non-zero current. The transistor is on, okay? And uh, for saturation region assumption, this situation has to be correct. VDS should be greater than VDS sat. Okay. Now, uh, analyze if you go on analyzing the circuit using saturation current voltage relationship. Uh, then you find out uh, for the given VGS what is VGS sat. And if that is the case, well, yes, then, then, then the analysis is correct. If not, then you have to go and repeat that step because this transistor was biased in the non sat region given the VDS is greater than VDN. So, what it says is that you evaluate the resulting bias condition for the transistor. Now, if the assumed parameter uh, values in step one are valid, then the initial assumption is correct. Okay. So, if the assumed parameter values in step one is that you are, that you are in the saturation region and you have used the IV relationship. Uh, of the saturation region uh, from that current you find what is vds and if this holds if this 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 inequality holds well the analysis is correct okay but on the other hand if vds is less than vdn the transistor is probably cut off and vds less than vds set transistor is likely bias in non sat region so for the analysis you need uh, this um, the knowledge of the operation the regimes of transistor uh, so it, it is either in non sat it is in sat or uh, if not in both the two, then it is in cutoff if uh, VGS is less than uh, VDN over here. Okay, so the initial assumption is proved incorrect. Then a new assumption must be made, and the circuit should be reanalyzed. So step three must be repeated. So uh, we have done this uh, steps in the previous example as well. Okay, so that's how you do the DC analysis of a MOSFET. That's all.